Shalom campers, it's Maria from Camp Butwin, and I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite summer activities, which is raising and supporting monarch butterflies in the backyard. Every year, monarch butterflies spend their winters in the forests of Mexico. They move north in the springtime, following the sprouting milkweed all the way back through the U.S. and even into Canada. In the summers, they will lay five generations of eggs, which will hatch into caterpillars and transform into butterflies, until their super generation of migrators flies all the way back to Mexico in the fall. You can find monarchs every summer in Minnesota, especially if you have lots of nectar producing flowers, which the grown-up butterflies drink from, and milkweed, a native plant which is the only place monarchs can lay eggs and the only food source for their caterpillars. Every there are many types of milkweed, but two that grow easily in Minnesota are called common milkweed, which you can recognize by its tall stalks and thick velvety leaves with pink clusters of flowers when it blooms, and swamp milkweed, which has thinner, flatter leaves. Both types have a milky white sap, which is where they get their name. On this picture, you can see a tiny little monarch egg on the underside of a leaf. When checking for eggs, you will notice they are white to pale yellow, slightly cone-shaped, and have very tiny vertical stripes. The eggs will hatch three to four days after they are laid. There are, there are five phases in a caterpillar's growth. Just like campers go from taste to galim to sabra and so on, caterpillars go through phases called instars. A first instar is just a tiny little caterpillar baby. They look gray with a black head and are only a couple millimeters long. The first thing it does is turn around and eat its own eggshell, and then it begins to nibble on the milkweed leaf itself. This stage lasts one to three days, mostly depending on temperature. On second instars, you can start to see the stripe pattern and little nubs at both the front and the back. They are growing really fast, and within a few days, they will become third instars. You may notice that they are especially still during their transition between stages as they get ready to molt or shed their old skin. Third instars have a couple new skills. For one, they will start eating at the edges of a leaf instead of biting a hole in the middle. The other skill they have is a startle reflex when they sense danger or disturbance. They will curl into a tight ball and drop from the leaf. If you see this happen, don't worry, the caterpillar is just using its protective instincts to hide from predators. After a few moments alone, it will uncurl and make its way back to its leaf. Fourth and fifth instars continue growing, eating, and pooping at an incredible rate, sometimes eating multiple whole leaves each day. They get faster at moving around, sometimes going exploring for a place to pupate or make a chrysalis. By the time a caterpillar is ready to J, it weighs 2,000 times more than when it hatched. When a monarch is ready, it finds a cozy horizontal surface and weaves a strong silk mat. The caterpillar will hang onto this mat with its back set of legs and hang its body in a J shape. Within 12 to 24 hours, they will go through their final molt, becoming a bright green chrysalis. In this video, you can see a time lapse of a caterpillar going into its chrysalis from a J. When a monarch is ready, it finds a cozy horizontal surface and weaves a strong silk mat. The caterpillar will hang onto this mat with its back set of legs and hang its body in a J shape. Within 12 to 24 hours, they will go through their final molt, becoming a bright green chrysalis. In this video, you can see a time lapse of a caterpillar going into its chrysalis from a J. They will be in their chrysalis for one to two weeks, but you will be able to tell when they are almost ready to emerge because the shell of the chrysalis becomes clear, allowing you to see their black and orange folded wings through the shell. They break through their shell, grasp on with their new long legs, and let their wings stretch out and dry over the course of a few hours. When they are ready to fly, they will look for nectar from flowers. They will also look for other butterflies to mate with or just to hang out with. Especially in the migratory generation, monarchs will roost in groups at night, usually in tall trees. Male and female butterflies can be distinguished by the presence of two spots on their lower wings. These spots show that the butterfly is male. Female butterflies without the spots will be the ones who can lay eggs. Monarchs are amazing creatures. Unfortunately, they're also struggling to survive. 
They have lost over 90% of their habitat in recent decades as humans have developed more and more of their natural land and utilized pesticides and other things that are dangerous for these and other pollinators. We can help monarchs, bees, and all these other amazing vital insects by avoiding the use of harmful pesticides in our own gardens and by planting milkweed and other nectar-producing flowers. In the wild, a monarch egg has a very low chance of making it to an adult butterfly. Scientists found out that humans could boost these chances significantly by raising caterpillars indoors, where they're protected from predators, parasites, and other natural dangers. However, more recent research has shown that the caterpillars who were raised indoors and did not get exposed to temperature changes, light cycles, air movement, and other aspects of being outside weren't as strong or as smart as wild butterflies, especially when it came to things like knowing when, how, and where to migrate. This was disappointing news to many for sure, but listening to science is important when you are trying to figure out how to help an endangered animal survive. Scientists now recommend trying to raise caterpillars and butterflies outdoors if at all possible. So the best thing individuals can do is to create a safe habitat for them. If you want to see their life cycle up close, raising them in a container like a mason jar or mesh enclosure can give them protection while still giving them a more natural environment. You can help participate in monarch research too. Every year, scientists track monarch migration by tagging butterflies on their wings. When these tags are found, the location is noted and scientists learn more about monarch movement, population, and their journey south. This year, I have lots of milkweed and nectar plants in my yard, but I will also be raising a few caterpillars in containers outside so we can see them up close. If you want to do this, you'll need a few things to get started. A container like this mesh enclosure or a mason jar, paper towels, and a milkweed source because you'll need to feed your caterpillars fresh leaves every day. That's all you really need. Here's a picture of my big outdoor butterfly apartment building from last year. My caterpillars are growing up on top and once they are in their chrysalis, I move them downstairs to hang on that stick. Start by making sure your container is nice and clean. You don't want any harmful germs or chemicals inside that could make your caterpillar sick. You also want to make sure you have clean hands when handling anything that will come in contact with the caterpillar. No bug spray or other stuff that could be dangerous for them. After you've washed your hands and your jar, you can get half or even a quarter sheet of your paper towel damp, fold it, and place it in the bottom of the jar. This provides some humidity and also makes it easier to clean out the jar each day. To do all that growing, caterpillars do a lot of pooping. Then take a leaf of milkweed, I usually rinse it off while under cool water first, and place it in the jar. If you have floral tubes or something like that, you can stick the stem of the leaf in there to keep it fresher for longer, but it's not necessary. If your caterpillar will go on the leaf before you put it in the jar, that's great. Otherwise, don't worry, they will find their way to their food when they are ready. A dry paper towel makes a great lid to your container, as long as your jar is in a place that it will not get rained on, and lets plenty of air through, even without poking holes. If you are using a glass jar, make sure it is out of direct sunlight so it doesn't get too hot. Each day, watch your caterpillar grow. You'll want to remove your caterpillar and leaf. You can place them on a paper towel. Dump out the old paper towel with any frass. That's a special word for bug poop. And give the jar a quick rinse. Then put a fresh paper towel and leaf in the jar. Every few days, you may notice a period of time where the caterpillar doesn't want to move at all. This is normal and usually means they are getting ready to molt, so be prepared for a big growth spurt. Some people raise multiple caterpillars together in a larger container, and this can work well as long as you are able to keep the space clean and all the caterpillars are healthy. Occasionally, though, a caterpillar will get sick, and they may spread this to others that are living in the same container. Eventually, your caterpillar will make its way up to the paper towel roof, although I have had a couple find other spots on the sides of their containers to make its silk mat and hang in a J-shape. If you are very lucky, you may even see it transform into its chrysalis. At this point, you can just empty any remaining poop and let the chrysalis hang in the empty container. They do not need anything during this phase except for time and their own butterfly magic. Start by making sure your container is nice and clean. You don't want any harmful germs or chemicals Start by making sure your container is nice and clean. You don't want any harmful germs or chemicals inside that could make your caterpillar sick. 
You also want to make sure you have clean hands when handling anything that will come in contact with the caterpillar. No bug spray or other stuff that could be dangerous for them. After you've washed your hands and your jar, you can get half or even a quarter sheet of your paper towel damp, fold it, and place it in the bottom of the jar. This provides some humidity and also makes it easier to clean out the jar each day. To do all that growing, caterpillars do a lot of pooping. Then take a leaf of milkweed. I usually rinse it off while under cool water first and place it in the jar. If you have floral tubes or something like that, you can stick the stem of the leaf in there to keep it fresher for longer, but it's not necessary. If your caterpillar will go on the leaf before you put it in the jar, that's great. Otherwise, don't worry, they will find their way to their food when they are ready. A dry paper towel makes a great lid to your container, as long as your jar is in a place that it will not get rained on, and lets plenty of air through, even without poking holes. If you are using a glass jar, make sure it is out of direct sunlight so it doesn't get too hot. Each day, watch your caterpillar grow. You'll want to remove your caterpillar and leaf. You can place them on a paper towel. Dump out the old paper towel with any frass, that's a special word for bug poop, and give the jar a quick rinse. Then put a fresh paper towel and leaf in the jar. Every few days you may notice a period of time where the caterpillar doesn't want to move at all. This is normal and usually means they are getting ready to molt, so be prepared for a big growth spurt. Some people raise multiple caterpillars together in a larger container, and this can work well as long as you are able to keep the space clean and all the caterpillars are healthy. Occasionally though, a caterpillar will get sick and they may spread this to others that are living in the same container. Eventually your caterpillar will make its way up to the paper towel roof, although I have had a couple find other spots on the sides of their containers, to make its silk mat and hang in a J-shape. If you are very lucky, you may even see it transform into its chrysalis. At this point, you can just empty any remaining poop and let the chrysalis hang in the empty container. They do not need anything during this phase except for time and their own butterfly magic. One day you will notice the chrysalis has gone from bright green to dark. Look closely and you will see the black and orange folded wings of the adult butterfly. This means your little friend is done growing their wings and ready to emerge within a day or so. In this video, you can see a new butterfly emerge from its chrysalis. One day you will notice the chrysalis has gone from bright green to dark. Look closely and you will... Now for the really fun part. Once your adult butterfly has emerged and stretched out its wings for a few hours, it will begin beating its wings more powerfully and may even flutter away on its own. If it needs a little assistance getting out of the container, you can gently help it onto your finger and set it near a yummy, nectar-rich flower. You may even see your butterfly take its first sips through its proboscis, the long straw-like mouth they use to drink. Ready to fly on your own and raise some butterflies? There are some really helpful resources out there that can provide guidance if you run into questions. Some trustworthy sites you can explore for more information about monarchs are Monarch Joint Venture at www.monarchjointventure.org, the Save Our Monarchs Foundation at www.saveourmonarchs.org, or the University of Minnesota slash University of Wisconsin Monarch Larva Monitoring Project at monarchjointventure.org slash MLMP.